Hello and welcome to the lecture series on monetary economics. In the previous lecture, we have seen the superficial view of the Indian financial system and its structure. So if you can recollect, it was organized or formal and unorganized or informal at the two ends. <clears throat> and then we move to look at how the organized can be further subclassified or subdivided. So for the first thing which we came across was regulators like the Reserve Bank of India or the Securities and Exchange Board of India, the Ministry of Finance and the in, uh, Insurance Regulatory and Development Authority of India. So these were some of the regulators. Then we move to something called as the financial institutions. They can be, I told you that they can be either banking institutions or non-banking institutions. Then we had financial markets, both money and capital, money market and capital market. Money market was for short term and this was for long term. Then we had financial institute, uh, financial instruments per se, and they were for sh uh, shorter term, short term, medium term and long term instruments. Yeah. So this was on a very comprehensive sense, the idea of what organized or, or, or uh, the formal Indian financial system can be subclassified, but this can be further classified. The fin uh, now we are going to look at only financial institutions in this class. So therefore financial institutions are further classified into banking institutions and non-banking institutions. Yeah. So today I'll be talking <coughs> about only this part, which is the banking institutions. So let's get started. The first distinction or the subclassification with respect to banking institutions under financial institutions is scheduled commercial bank and scheduled cooperative bank. Now scheduled banks are those banks which are included in the second schedule of the Reserve Bank of India Act of 1934 and those which are not included in the second schedule are called as non scheduled banks. So today I'll be talking only about the scheduled bank. So they are two types scheduled commercial and scheduled cooperative banks. Now let us look at how the scheduled commercial is further classified. So that is further classified as public sector banks. Then we have private sector banks. Then we have foreign banks and then we have regional rural banks RRBs popularly known as yeah so now public sector banks are further reclassified into the state bank of India and its associates and other public sector banks like bank bank of Baroda then <coughs> Union Bank of India and things like that yeah then we have the private sector banks the private sector banks are again further classified into old banks and new banks so I hope this idea is pretty much clear, which is the scheduled commercial banks. They are further classified into public sector, private sector, foreign sector and regional rural banks. The public sector banks are further classified into state bank and its associates and other public sector banks. The private banks are classified as old banks and new banks. So this is what scheduled commercial banks would look like under banking institutions, under financial institutions. Let us now move to the schedule cooperative banks now cooperative banks can be looked at from two different angles one is the urban cooperative banks and the other is the classification of uh, state cooperative uh, state cooperative banks into district and primary agricultural credit societies yeah so this is how the cooperative the structure of cooperative banks in india can be looked at the first distinction is urban cooperative banks and the second is state cooperative bank under which we have district cooperative banks and then we have primary agricultural credit societies which are at the rural level that is the grassroots level yeah so this is how this is just a, a skeleton of how financial institutions can be subdivided into banking institutions and non-banking institutions and how only banking institution can be classified into scheduled commercial banks and scheduled cooperative banks and how scheduled commercial banks can be further re reclassified and scheduled cooperative banks can be further reclassified. So I hope the idea of only financial institutions under the Indian financial system is pretty much clear. In the next class, I'll talk about the non-banking and also give you a sense of how financial markets to be very precise, the money market and the capital market would look like under the Indian financial system. Thank you so much.